Now, before going into laryngospasm, a few anatomical aspect is very, very important. This is the closed portion of the larynx and this is the open portion of the larynx. You have to understand certain muscle closes the larynx and certain muscle opens the larynx. The most important muscles which play a crucial role in opening and closing are lateral cryptoarterinoid, oblique and transverse arytenoids and the posterior cricoarytenoid. Lateral cryptoarytenoid and the transverse and oblique arytenoid adex vocal cord and narrows rima glottitis. So, these three muscles adduct the vocal cord and close the glottic opening. And one more muscle, thyroarytenoid vocalis, it tenses the vocal cord. So, this four muscles basically adduct the vocal cord as well as tense the vocal cord. But posterior cricoarytenoid is an abductor of the vocal cord. Now, coming to the type of laryngospasm, it can be partial where the posterior aspect is slightly open or it is complete. There is total closure of false and true vocal cord. And coming to the mechanical event that happens with laryngospasm. In case of incomplete or partial laryngospasm, true vocal cord causes there is a small opening at the posterior part the base of the epiglottis move posteriorly and your false vocal cord contracts tightly and there is base of arytenoid cartilage moving forward and tilting backward. These are the things which happens with incomplete laryngospasm. With complete laryngospasm, you can see only the contracted false vocal cord and tilted arytenoid cartilage. Here you can see the right false vocal cord which is very prominent. Now coming to the subtle difference between incomplete and complete laryngospasm. Here in partial laryngospasm there is a small gap posteriorly. In complete laryngospasm there is complete closure of true and false vocal cord. Arytenoids is tilted backward epiglottitis folds over glottic opening. In partial laryngospasm due to the posterior opening, there might be a minimal air entry. In complete, there is no air entry. And partial manifest as inspiratory strider, suprasternal and supraclavicular retraction and flailing of the royal rib. Here in complete, there is no bedstone, paradoxical chest motion and hypoxia and bradycardia sets in very fast. And partial, it is mainly supraglottic component. In complete, there is supraglottic as well as a glottic component. Cards partially open. Here in complete, the cards is totally closed and in partial, there might be a little entitled carbon dioxide which might be decreased. Here, the entitled carbon dioxide is not present at all. Coming to the timing of laryngospasm. Usually, it happens at the emergence period with the incidence is around 48% or during induction and intubation where the incidence is around 24%. Maintenance, it can be 24% where you are stimulation or light planes of anesthesia can cause 